five. It's almost six. All right, let's go. All units, this is Inspector Hines. The word is go. Repeat, the word is go. <laughs> Play this through your horn. Hold your fire. No firing. Wait for my signal. No firing. Shield, this is the police commissioner. Listen very carefully. If somebody gets hurt, the charges against you are going to be much worse than they already are. So come on out with your hands over your head. I'll give you just one minute. seconds. How many exits out of there? Just front and back. They're both covered. Didn't there used to be a building where that parking lot is? Yeah, I think so, sir. Ten seconds left. Hey, wait a minute. All these buildings connect. Gentlemen, I think we're guarding an empty building. I'll check it out, sir. Wait a minute, Charlie. Take somebody with you. Get your men in those buildings. Go. That's okay. Are you in pain, sir? Not too bad. Commissioner, I phoned Mrs. McMillan. She knows.
I said anything. No, nothing yet. <laughs> Mrs. McMillan. This whole thing is my fault. It was supposed to be me, but he just pushed me out of the way. Chuck, don't make things different on yourself than they already are, okay? Okay. okay. Want a cup of coffee? Yeah. close to the artery. We better do it upstairs. Why don't you put a dressing on it and I'll go tell them what's happening. How is he? Oh, he's stable right now. We've located the slug, but we can't take it out here. I've got an OR and a surgical team coming free in 40 minutes. Can it wait that long? It'll take at least that long to get him ready. Can I see him? I suppose so. Just for a minute, please. surgery now. I love you, Matt. I'm sorry. I've got to go now. Leave out here for a minute. There's no room in the passageway. He's been given a pre op. He should be out soon. Check the rails. minutes, Doctor. They're not ready yet. You might as well shut down for a few minutes. I'll be right there.
rid of the other one. He's breathing okay. I'll stay with him a few minutes more. We'll be right out. Well, why was he left alone in the hallway? Because he didn't want to block the inside corridor. Then I should have instructed one of the nurses. Doctor, I I'm guess I'm going to report this to the board. We're going to take you in now. No, no. Just, no, no. just relax. You'll be asleep in a minute. Just relax. Okay, get the ID going. Take off the dressing, let's take a look at it. No. Look close. Call and right. Young man in the hospital. Room. It's okay. Four, eleven. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to take care of you. You're going to be all right. Okay, go ahead. What did he want? I don't know. Something about call and write to the head man in the hospital. worried there for a while. I uh, had me worried, too, but I'm fine. You were lucky. So was I. Are they taking good care of you here? Yes, Mildred, just fine. Good. I made you some soup. Thank you. Ought to get you back on your feet. Well, now I suppose you can tell us why the commissioner of police was on a drug raid. Next thing you know, you're going to be giving out traffic tickets. It wasn't just a drug raid. They had the biggest dope ring in the state, a man called the Possum. Oh, hey, that's a cute name. Do you know who he is? We don't know anything about him. We haven't even gotten close anyway. He was supposed to be there. Oh, I get it. So you thought it would be nice for the top good guy to be on hand to greet the top bad guy, right? We've been after him for over a year. And then we got a break, a big delivery. So instead of a large amount of heroin, you wound up with a small amount of lead, right? Mac. Sergeant Enright is outside. What's he doing outside? Well, it feels just off. Come on in, Sergeant. Hi, Charlie. Hi. I brought these for you. They're Thank beautiful. You. Let me put them on.
sorry. You don't know how to say it. And you've been feeling guilty ever since. Well, you'd do the same thing if the situation were reversed. I wish the situation were reversed. So do I. <laughs> oh. Sir, uh, I just want to tell you that I'm oh, so... Charlie, forget it. You were doing your job and I was doing mine, so... That's all there is to it. Thank you, sir. Remember that the next time I burn your dinner. Bring me up to date. Sit down. Uh, no, thank you, sir. I, I would prefer to stand. I get very nervous when I'm sitting down in a hospital. Lying down in a hospital makes me nervous. Well, I know it sounds silly, but you see, sir, once when I was a kid, I was sitting down in a hospital corridor. And all of a sudden, this doctor comes by, and he stuck a thermometer in my mouth. And the next thing I know, I've got a fever of 104 degrees, and they've yanked my tonsils out. Well, unless they've grown back, chances are you're safe. Sit down. But I still have my appendix. Stand. Thank you. you now tell me. OK. Sir, on four other simultaneous raids, we arrested eight pushers, got some guns, and very little junk. You see, sir, they were waiting for Shields to make a delivery. Uh, what about Shields? Has he talked? No, sir. But his lawyer sure has. He's been screaming that there's no probable cause for the arrest. Probable cause? What is this? Chicken soup? No offense, mother. Just make sure it doesn't all leak out. You see, sir, Shields' lawyer was at the station house even before we got back there with Shields. That means that Trigamundo's cover was blown even before the raid. They were wise to us. Well, that's why the possum didn't show. What about Trigamundo, any word? No, sir, nothing. What about the coded message? Well, I've got two boys working on it, but all they're coming up with is nothing. Mac, you only had surgery a day and a half ago. You should be relaxing. You're not supposed to be sitting around talking about police business. What did you say? You're supposed to be relaxing. No, no, no. When, when was my operation? Day before yesterday. This isn't Thursday. No, Mac, it's Friday. I know I should have brought him fish. What happened to Thursday? Well, you slept through Thursday. All day? Mm -hmm. You were unconscious for 36 hours. Yeah, getting shot can be very tiring. I slept all day? What's the matter? Uh, I don't know. You ever had a dream that you've known you had and then you couldn't put your finger on it? Yeah. Well, that's... What's the matter? Commissioner, I'm Dr. Eisner. I was the surgeon for your operation. How are you feeling? Uh, fine, fine. Good. How are you today? Relieved. Yes, I should think. You know, that, uh, that slug was very close to an artery. You saved the slug, I hope. Ah, uh, sir, I've already vouchered that in the ballistics lab. Oh, good. I'm just between operations right now, but when I heard you'd regained consciousness, I thought I'd look in on you. Um, uh, you know that, uh, that scrape on your arm? I didn't miss with my scalpel. You, uh, you had a little accident. Accident? Yes, I'm, I'm afraid it's a little embarrassing, uh, Seen so many flowers in my life. Who died? I guess if you're uh, somebody really important, you don't have to die to get flowers. Commissioner, this is Dr. Vale. He uh, assisted me in the operation. Commissioner? What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. It... Wait a minute. Somebody did die. I saw it. I, I saw a murder. What? 
Right here in this hospital, two men dressed in green. We're smothering another man to death with a pillow. Where, sir? I don't know. In one of the rooms. You were in somebody's room? But you were unconscious. How'd you get there? Well, I don't know. I... I must have walked. I heard a noise. And it awakened me. I know this sounds weird, but I remember it. What else do you remember? Two men, dressed in green. I lunged at them, fell into them. And then I passed out. That's just about all I remember. Now, would you like me to tell you what really happened? You don't believe me? Oh, I think that what you think you saw was very real, Commissioner, but you were hallucinating. You had a serious wound, you were in a state of shock, and you were heavily sedated. The sedation alone would account for hallucinations. But I saw it. Hallucinations can sometimes seem to be very real. Look, you say you remember falling. Is that right? Well, I'm afraid you really did fall. That accounts for the scrape on your arm. But you weren't walking into a room. You, uh... You fell off the gurney. We found you lying next to it. You mean he was left alone? No. I uh, instructed the on-duty nurse to keep an eye on him, but she had an emergency that took her off her station for a few minutes. Anyway, the shock of the fall ended the hallucination. That's why it's the last thing you remember. It can't be. Take my word. It is. Some of our patients may choke when they see their bills, but uh, we don't smother them with pillows. You know, Commissioner, you're still groggy. It's going to take you a few days to get it all together. Meantime, I think we should all call it a day. You need all the sleep you can get. He's right. I'll look in on you later. Um, one more minute. Okay. I'll wait outside, too, sir. See you tomorrow, Commissioner. Thanks, Mildred. And Charlie, let me know if you hear any more on Trigamundo. I will, sir. Now, listen, I want you to sleep tight. I'm going to be here in the morning, and no more thinking about Trigamundo. You really had me worried, Mac. I'll try not to stand in front of any more moving bullets. And listen, you, if you're going to have any more hallucinations, how about dreaming one up about me? Oh, I was thinking more of a long, willowy blonde. Well, why don't you go back to the one with the guy in the pillow? I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and tell that nurse to give you back your wedding ring. I don't like you hanging around the hospital without it on. Oh. You really think you saw a murder, don't you, Mac? Yes, I did. Well, then, as far as I'm concerned, you saw a murder. Now all we got to do is prove it. Love you. Dr. Baldwin, paging Dr. Baldwin. Report to emergency room. Stat. Hi, Roz. Hi, Dr. Vale. Hey, yeah, uh, Roz, what time do you get off work tonight? Uh, I'm through at four, and I come back on at midnight. Why? Well, what do you say to a little dinner tonight? Dinner? Sure. Uh. Well, we've never really gotten a chance to know each other, and I think it's time we change that. Oh, that's sort of like. Ow. Hey, careful. <laughs> Better? Much. Shall we say uh, we'll meet in the parking lot at five? I'll be there, Jim. Great. Oh, hey, Roz. Uh, has anybody uh, talked to you about the other night? Which other night? Yeah, about uh, Macmillan falling off his gurney. No? Uh, if anyone wants to know, I asked you to keep an eye on him. But you didn't. I know, but what's the difference? Well, couldn't I be blamed for his accident? Well, no. You, you had that emergency in room 440, and uh, well, you, you had to leave your station. That's true. Five o'clock in the parking lot. Oh, Jim, hmm? how about 5.30 at my apartment? Dr. Bank, paging Dr. Bank, report to nurse's station, stat. Come in. 
commissioner. And where do we think we're going? Oh, I thought I'd just take a little walk. Oh, we did, did we? Yes. Don't you know that when women give birth nowadays, why, they're up and around the very next day. They say it's the best thing. Uh, well, Commissioner, you had uh, more like a cesarean. And when the offspring is a healthy bullet and the mother has lost as much blood as you have, walking around is frowned upon, at least for a week. Now, are we all quite clear on that point? Mm -hmm. Operator, I want the desk on the fourth floor, please. East wing. <clears throat> yes, uh, this is Dr. Gunther. Would you send Nurse Fisher to my office immediately, please? Thank you. Uh, uh radiology. Dr. Scholler, please report to room 428. Dr. Scholler, please report to room 428. I'm sorry, I must have the wrong room. Oh, so what? Come in anyway. I haven't had a visitor in two days. Carl Bruin's the name. Stuart McMillan. Oh, yeah, the commissioner. I saw you on the news. I thought the police commissioner just sat behind a big desk all day. Uh, he should. You hurt bad? No, I'll be all right. I'll give you two guesses why I'm here. Well, let's see, uh, broken leg? Ah, you read my chart. Do you mind telling me how long you've been in here? Like this? Uh, let's see, five days, broke it Monday. Have you been out of this room? Are you kidding? Did anything unusual happen in the past few nights? Well, a moth flew down inside my cast. <laughs> Other than that, it's been your pretty average convalescence. Why? Just uh, curious. Hey, you want to play some cards? No, I, I really have to get back. Well, come by any time. If I'm asleep, just uh, write a message on my cast here. Take it easy, Mr. Bruin. You too. I'm Alec Janetta. I was your anesthesiologist. Hi. What are you doing out of bed? Oh, just uh, satisfying an itch. Did you? I don't think so. Is uh, this where it was supposed to have happened? Is there anybody in this hospital who doesn't know? <laughs> Not many. I just got it from a ward attendant. You're the talk of the fourth floor. You, uh, 
You still believe you saw a killing, huh? Convince me that I didn't. I guess I'm to blame for this whole thing, since I'm the one who gave you the shot. You were very heavily sedated, you know. It seems so real. Well, drug-induced hallucinations sometimes do. I had a patient once, a, a single girl, who envisioned her wedding while she was under. After the operation, she asked when her husband was going to visit her. There you are. Oh. Now, didn't I tell you not to get out of that bed? Nurse Fisher, are you everywhere at once? Yes, including the office of Dr. Gunther, administrator of this hospital. I uh, think you better hop in. OK, OK, right. OK. There we go. Right, and now you put your feet right up here. That's a good boy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Commissioner. Especially conscious. Home, James. Do you know how long the man in 411 has been a patient? Mr. Bruin? Oh, four days. Four a days. skiing accident. He told me it was five. Well, maybe it was five. He couldn't move around or anything, could he? Be out of his room, say, Wednesday night? Not a chance, Commissioner. He's been that way since he got here. Sorry. How would I go about finding out who died in this hospital in the last 48 hours? Check the morgue records. Oh, yeah. But, Commissioner, yeah. I really do believe that you are getting yourself all worked up over nothing. Now, if there had been a murder in this hospital, don't you think that somebody would know it? Somebody does know. Me. I'll get the car, sir. I don't know why you won't reconsider and stay here another day or two. It's not as though you had your ears pierced, you Look. Know. I'll stay in bed, I promise. There's no difference between a hospital bed and our bed. A bed's a bed. And besides, the food is so bad here, I can't wait to get back to Mildred's cook. Oh, no. I'm going to do all the cooking while you're recuperating. Uh, do you think they've given away my bed yet? You want a plant right here? <laughs> from the morgue? Oh, yes, sir, I sure did. There were no unidentified deaths reported to Bay Area General in the last three days. Four days ago, there was one. John Doe, vagrant, pneumonia, died Wednesday around 4 p.m. That would be two hours before I was shot. That's right, sir. Commissioner, is there any way I can get you to change your mind? No. Well, we can't keep you here against your will, of course. But that was quite a wound you had. I think you're making a big mistake checking out today. Don't worry, Doctor. My wife will take good care of me. Thanks for everything. Please, take it easy. I will. Search for a smile. <laughs> Philip. Oh, what is it, Terry? Well, this I'm is a good very... one, Commissioner. Oh, Listen, God. I think I better tell you a little bit about it and get you caught up I with just... it. You see the girl with her hair piled on top of her head? Mm -hmm. That's Terry Talbot. Now, her father is the mayor, and he's up for re-election. But she has just discovered that she's pregnant, and she doesn't know whether Mark, the law student, is the father, or whether it's Philip, her boss. <laughs> No, if it's Mark, she wants the baby. If it's Philip, well, she may commit suicide. Now I know where they get the name for this show. <sighs> oh, gosh, I hope it's Mark. Terry would make a lovely mother. I can't believe they'd actually show this stuff. Oh, yeah, wait till you see the next one. 
It's called How Far Will You Go? People come dressed up as pizzas and ice cream cones just to get the prize of the week. Can't wait. Oh, it's, yeah. Lunch time. I fixed you something really special. Oh, it looks swell. You're gonna like this, Mac. Just hold on. There it is. What is this? Your lunch. It doesn't look like lunch. It doesn't even look like food. Don't be silly. That's all very good for you. I just spent an hour at the health food store, and that's going to have you up and around and on your feet in no time. What's this? That's yogurt and brewer's yeast. Very organic. That'll give you your strength back. It isn't worth it. Oh. What's this? Kelp. Seaweed? Yes, full of vitamin K. Very good to clot the blood. Whatever happened to good old chicken soup? Ah, my savior, the chicken soup fairy. Yeah, listen, the program I wanted to see is on. Excuse me, would you please? This is Edna Marie Vincenzi. How far will you go? All the way. All the way! All right. Oh. Hello? Ah, uh, no, I'm sorry. Listen, he's asleep. Uh, Sally. No, uh, wait, I hold on one second. This is a brand new car. Oh. Yeah, Charlie. I'm gonna blot. All right, don't say a word to him or his attorney. I'll be right down. Mildred. You'll be right down. Sergeant Enright cannot handle this by himself. Now for the curtain, dummy! It won't take long. I can't I'll be right back. Take your time. It's only blood. Now, at the outset, I'd like it clearly understood that my client is here voluntarily. I've explained his constitutional rights to him, and of course, he doesn't have to say anything. That's the law. Yes. Now, my client has refused to answer any questions. However, at this juncture, Commissioner, he might be willing to cooperate if we could come to some sort of agreement. On? Well, you know, one hand washes the other. Your client's hands are filthy. Mine are clean. But empty, eh, Commissioner? Not exactly. I've got your client, remember? Yes, but we know that he's not the man that you want, but that he might be able to help you if the price is right. I don't make deals. Right now, your client is about to be indicted for attempted murder. And that could mean up to 25 years. And right now, that's what I'd like to recommend. But if he cooperates, I'll bring it to the attention of the court. Well, Commissioner, I had in mind something a bit more concrete, like, say, a zip to three. The walls and floor of his cell are going to be concrete for the next 25 years if he doesn't cooperate. Look, it's... You don't have to say anything. Shut up. You're not going away for 25 years. What do you want to know? What were you doing at the Embarcadero Hotel? I was supposed to get a shipment. Of what? Heavy drugs. Different kinds. The possum. What do you know about him? <laughs> I never heard of him. Don't pull my leg or I'll send you back right now. Okay. He's the top man. His name? No idea. What does he look like? I've never seen him. I never dealt with him directly. Who's your contact? A tall guy. Never used any names. Tall, dark. How does he work? He'd call me when he had some stuff, tell me where to be. What do you know of an undercover policeman named John Trigamundo? Nothing. We were talking about John Trigamundo. I said I don't know anything. Get him out of here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I once heard the big guy say some cop was nosing around. He said they'd have to take care of him. How? <laughs> I, I don't know. Listen, you. Either you talk or I'm going to throw you the hell out of here. Now make up your mind. What do you want? A lead. OK. Sometimes when the big guy'd phone, I'd hear names being called in the background. Names? What kind of names? <laughs> Who paid attention? Is that all you got? Hey, th that's everything, so help me. All right, you can leave.
Commissioner. Give me a break. I gave you everything I have. I know. Including a 38 slug in my gut. Well, sir, what did you think? When I was in the hospital, I heard names being called all the time over the loudspeaker. Dr. So-and-so, Mr. This, Mr. That. Let me see that message again. It was right in front of us all the time. What was? What's the part that was so confusing? Oh, that stuff about his deserving an award for patience. Read it now. A hospital ward. He was telling us where he was. And where he was killed. That was no hallucination I had. It was Trigamundo. Shields was getting calls from a hospital. Bay Area General. No wonder we had trouble finding the possum. What a perfect cover-up. A hospital. <laughs> Come in. Mac. I'm sorry I didn't get in to see you. How are you? I feel fine, thanks, Bob. Sit down. Thank you. Now, what is all this about a murder in my hospital? It's like I told you on the phone. A man was murdered on the night I was operated on. I think I know who it was. One of my men named John Trigamundo. I don't know what to say. Seems impossible. It's not impossible. Of course, you know, uh, I'll help you in any way I can. I'm at your disposal. Thank you. I'd like your records on everybody who was on duty that night. Doctors Eisner, Vail, Janetta, Nurse Fisher. No problem. Anything else? Well, I might need the records, anything you can find on anybody who was associated with the hospital. Mac, you're talking about uh, more than a thousand people. I know. If you would send them to Sergeant Enright, he'll take care of it. Okay. One more thing. There was a John Doe vagrant who died here the same night, supposedly of pneumonia. I'd like anything you can find on him. You think that's your man? Hmm? I don't know. Okay. I'll get all these things to Sergeant Enright as soon as I can. I'd like you to talk to Mr. Bruin, the man with the broken leg. I didn't get much of a chance to question you about the other night. Okay, where will you be? I think it's time to make my rounds on the ward for patients. Dr. Smith, Dr. Smith Trigamundo's message? Exactly. Sir, don't you think you ought to let me do that? No, I feel fine. The temperature feels all right. Pulse is good. No, no shortage of breath. You got lots of wind. Dr. Scholler. That's still Dr. sensitive? Scholler, well, I'd better... You're recovering very well. You through playing doctor? Sir? Did you remember to bring the photograph? Uh, yes, sir. Here it is. It was taken a couple of years ago, but I don't think he's changed much except...